Hello, muggles. I am so sorry that I had to suddenly stop that part of the final chapter. But let's just carry on where I left off. Madame Pomfrey, the matron, was a nice woman, but very strict. Oh, just five minutes, Harry pleaded. Absolutely not. Oh, you let Professor Dumbledore in? Well, of course. That was the headmaster. Quite different. You need rest. I am resting, Luke. Lying down and everything. Oh, go on, Madame Pomfrey. Oh, very well, she said. But five minutes only. And she let Ron and Hermione in. Harry! Hermione looked ready to fling her arms around him again. But Harry was glad that she held herself in as, a, as his head was still very sore. Oh, Harry, we were sure that you were going to. Oh, Dumbledore was so worried. And the whole school is talking about it, said Ron. What really happened? It was one of those rare occasions when this true story is even more strange and exciting than the wild rumours. Harry told them everything. Quirrell, the mirror, the stone, Voldemort. Ron and Hermione were a very good audience. They gasped in all the right places. And when Harry told them about what was under Quirrell's turban, Hermione screamed out loud. So the stone is gone, said Ron, finally. Fomel's just gonna die. That's what I said. But Dumbledore thinks that, well, oh, what was it? To the well-organised mind, death is but the next great adventure. I was said he was off his rocker, said Ron, looking quite impressed as to how mad his hero actually was. So what happened to you two, said Harry. Well, I got back all right, said Hermione. I brought Ron round, and that took a while, and we were dashing up to the Owlery to can contact Dumbledore when we met him in the entrance hall. He already knew. He just said, Harry's gone after him, hasn't he? And hurtled off to the third floor. Do you think he meant you to do it, said Ron, sending you your father's cloak and everything? Well, Hermione exploded. If he did, I meant to say, well, that's terrible. You could have been killed. No, it isn't, said Harry thoughtfully. He's a funny man, Dumbledore. I think he sort of wanted to give me a chance. I think he knows more or less everything that goes on here. I reckon he's got a pretty good idea that we were going to try. And instead of stopping us, he just taught us enough to help. I don't think it was an accident that he let me find out how the mirror worked. It's almost like he thought I had the right to face Voldemort if I could. Yeah, Dumbledore is barking, all right, said Ron proudly. Listen, you've got to be up for the end of your feast tomorrow. The points are all in and Slytherin won, of course. You missed the last Quidditch mar match. We were steamrollered by Ravenclaw without you, but the food will be good. <laughs> At that moment, Madame Pomfrey bustled over. You've had nearly 15 minutes now out, she said firmly. After a good night's sleep... Harry felt nearly back to normal. I want to go to the feast, he told Madame Pomfrey as she straightened his many sweet boxes. I can, can't I? Professor Dumbledore said that you're allowed to go, she said sniffily, as though in her opinion Professor Dumbledore didn't realise how risky feasts could be. And you have another visitor. Oh, good, said Harry, who is it? Hagrid sidled through the door as he spoke. As usual, when he was inside, Hagrid looked too big to be allowed. He sat down next to Harry, took one look at him and burst into tears. It's all my ready fault, he sobbed, his face in his hands. I told these will get how to get past Fluffy. I told him it was the only thing he didn't know and I told him he could have died <gasps> over a dragon egg. I'll never drink again. I should be chucked out and made to live as a muggle. Hagrid, said Harry, shocked to see Hagrid shaking with grief and remorse, great tears leaking down his beard. Hagrid, he'd have found out somehow. This is Voldemort that we're talking about. He'd have found out even if you hadn't told him. You could have died, <laughs> sobbed Hagrid. I don't say that name. Voldemort! Harry bellowed. 
And Hagrid was so shocked that he stopped crying. I've met him and I'm calling him by his name. Please cheer up, Hagrid. We saved the stone. It's gone. He can't use it. Have a chocolate frog. I've got lots. Hagrid wiped his nose on the back of his hand and said, That reminds me I've got you a present. Not a stoat sandwich, is it? said Harry anxiously. And at last, Hagrid gave a weak chuckle. No, Dumbledore gave me the day off yesterday to fix it. Course he should have sacked me instead. Anyway, I got you this. It seemed to be a handsome leather-covered book. Harry opened it curiously. It was full of wizard photographs. Smiling and waving at him from every page were his mother and father. Sent owls off to all your parents' old school friends asking for photos. You didn't know it. No, you didn't have any. Do you like it? Harry couldn't speak. And Hagrid understood. Harry made his way down to the, the end of year feast. Al alone that night. He had been held up by Madame Pomfrey's fussing about, insisting on giving him one last check-up. So the great hall was already full. It was decked out in the Slytherin colours of green and silver to celebrate Slyther Slytherins winning the House Cup for the seventh year in a row. A huge banner showing the Slytherin serpent covered the wall behind the high table. When Harry walked in, there was a sudden hush and then everyone started talking loudly at once. He slipped into a seat between Ron and Hermione at the Gryffindor table and tried to ignore the fact that people were standing up to look at him. Fortunately, Dumbledore arrived moments later. The babble died away. Another year gone, Dumbledore said cheerfully, and I must trouble you with an old man's wheezing waffle before we sink our teeth into our delicious feast. What a year it has been. Hopefully your heads are all a little fuller than they were. You have the whole summer ahead to get them nice and empty before next year starts. Now, as I understand it, the house cup here needs awarding and the points stand thus. In fourth place, Gryffindor, with 312 points. In third, Hufflepuff with 352. Ravenclaw have 426 and Slytherin 472. A storm of cheering and stamping broke out from the Slytherin table. Harry could see Malfoy banging his goblet on the table and it was a sickening sight. Yes, yes, well done Slytherin, said Dumbledore. However, Recent events must be taken into account. The room went very still. The Slytherin's smiles faded a little. <clears throat> My um, said Dumbledore, I have a few last minute points to dish out. Let me see. Yes, first to Mr. Ronald Weasley. Ron went purple in the face. He looked like a radish with bad sunburn. For the best game of chess Hogwarts has seen in many years, I award Gryffindor House. 50 points. Gryffindor cheers nearly raised the bewitched ceiling. The stars overhead seemed to quiver. Percy could hear, be heard telling the other prefects, my brother, you know, my youngest brother, got past McGonagall's giant chess set. <gasps> At last there was silence again. Second, to Miss Hermione Granger, for the use of cool logic in the face of fire, I award Gryffindor House. 50 points. Hermione buried her face in her arms. Harry strongly suspected that she had just burst into tears. Gryffindors up and down the table were beside themselves. They were a hundred points up. Third to Mr. Harry Potter, said Dumbledore. The room went deadly quiet. For pure nerve and outstanding courage, I award Gryffindor House... 60 points. The din was deafening. Those who could add up while yelling themselves hoarse knew that Gryffindor now had 472 points, exactly the same as Slytherin. They had drawn for the House Cup. If only Dumbledore had given Harry just one more point. Dumbledore raised his hand. The room gradually fell silent. There are all kinds of courage said Dumbledore, smiling. It takes a great deal of bravery to stand up to our enemies, 
but just as much to stand up to our friends. I therefore award 10 points to Mr. Neville Longbottom. Someone standing outside the Great Hall might have thought that some sort of explosion had taken place. So loud was the noise that erupted from the Gryffindor table. Harry, Ron and Hermione stood up to yell and cheer as Neville, white with shock, disappeared under a pile of people hugging him. He had never won so much as a point for Gryffindor before. Harry, still cheering, nudged Ron in the ribs and pointed at Malfoy, who couldn't have looked more stunned and horrified if he had just had the body-bind curse put on him. Which means, Dumbledore called over the storm of applause, for even Ravenclaw and Hufflepuff were celebrating the downfall of Slytherin. We need a little change of decoration. He clapped his hands and in an instant, the green hangings became scarlet and the silver became gold. A huge Slytherin serpent vanished and a towering Gryffindor lion took its place. Snape was shaking Professor McGonagall's hand with a horribly forced smile. He caught Harry's eye and Harry knew at once that Snape's feeling towards him hadn't changed one jot. This didn't worry Harry. It seemed as though life would be back to normal next year, or as normal as it ever was at Hogwarts. It was the best evening of Harry's life. Better than winning at Quidditch or Christmas or knocking out mountain trolls, he would never, ever forget tonight. Harry had almost forgotten that the exam results were still to come, but come they did. To their great surprise, both he and Ron passed with good marks. Hermione, of course, came top of the year. Even Neville scraped through his good herbology mark, making up for the abysmal potions one. They had hoped that Goyle, who was almost as stupid as he was mean, might be thrown out, but he passed too. It's a shame, but as Ron said, can't have everything in life. And suddenly, their wardrobes were empty, their trunks were packed, Neville's toad was found lurking in the corner of the toilets. Notes were handed out to all the students, warning them not to use magic over the holidays. I always hope they'll forget to give us these, said Fred Weasley, sadly. Hagrid was there to take them down to the fleet of boats that sailed across the lake. They were, bil they were boarding the Hogwarts Express, talking and laughing as the countryside became greener and tidier, eating Bertie Bott's ever-flavoured beans as he sped past Muggle Towns, pulling off their wizard robes and putting on jackets and coats, pulling into platform nine and three quarters at King's Cross, Cross Station. It took quite a while for them all to get off the platform. A wizened old guard was up, was up by the ticket barrier, letting them go through the gate in twos and threes so they didn't attract attention, by all bursting out into a solid wall at once and alarming the muggles. You must come and stay this summer, said Ron. Both of you, I'll send you an owl. Thanks, said Harry. I'll need something to look forward to. People jostled them as they moved forwards towards the gate back to the muggle world. Some of them called, Bye, Harry! See ya, Potter! Still famous, said Ron, grinning at him. Not where I'm going, I promise you, said Harry. He, Ron and Hermione passed through the gateway together. There he is, Mum. There he is, Luke. It was Ginny Weasley, Ron's younger sister, but she wasn't pointing at Ron. She squealed, look, Mum, I can see. Oh, be quiet, Ginny, it's rude to point. Mrs Weasley smiled down at them. Busy here, she said. Very, said Harry. Thanks for the fudge and the jumper, Mrs Weasley. Oh, it's nothing, dear. Ready, are you? It was Uncle Vernon, still purple face, still moustache, still looking furious at the nerve of Harry, carrying an owl in a cage in a station full of ordinary people. Behind him stood Aunt Petunia and Dudley, looking terrified at the very sight of Harry. You must be Harry's family, said Mrs Weasley. In a manner of speaking, said Uncle Vernon. Hurry up, boy. We haven't got all day, he walked away. Harry hung back for a last word with Ron and Hermione. See you over the summer, then. I hope you have a good holiday, said Hermione, looking uncertainly after Uncle Vernon, shocked that anyone could be so unpleasant. Oh, I will, said Harry, and they were surprised at the grin that was spreading over his face. They don't know we're not allowed to use magic at home. I'm going to have a lot of fun with Dudley this summer.
And that, my little muggles, is the end of the very first book of Harry Potter. Harry Potter and the Philosopher's Stone by J.K. Rowling. I really hope you enjoyed it and I will look up something equally as exciting to start reading next. Now guys, please clean your teeth every single night and wash, 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 wash your hands as often as you possibly can. Then, at the end of the night, snuggle yourself down. Give yourself a great big huge cuddle. You deserve it. I hope to see you soon.